Hey everybody, John Moogie War JM here with a quick little PSA. So for whatever reason, in the midst of the recording this and several other playthroughs when I was visiting Austin, uh, my new Elgato somehow, some way, did not record the first couple of minutes for the second, third, and fourth episodes of TMNT Shredder's Revenge. What me and Austin did is we did a re-recording of the first couple of minutes on a separate non-voice uh, recorded uh, playthrough. So the first couple of minutes of these episodes are going to feature entirely different gameplay from what you see on the screen. And we'll just, and there'll be a whiteout transition and it'll transfer over to what was actually recorded in this house. So bear that in mind and enjoy. Press start to begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Super Bonus Round. We're back with more Team and T Shredder's Revenge. I'm your host, John Moewar Jam. Joined as always, still in person, my co-host Japina. Hey! Alright, episode 10. We got a few screws loose. A few screws loose. <laughs> oh, is this um let's see, Metalhead? I think so. Oh yeah. Yeah. The silhouette this is the same. Oh, it looks just like Silicon Valley. Uh, yeah. Only the rich have the have the nice area. Meanwhile, everybody else suffers in uh, poverty. Oh. Yeah. Oh shit. So it's not seen that coming. Ooh, you got an extra life now. Sweet. Disgusting bug found. Help a collectible. There's one thing I like about that new one of us discovery uh, strategy, though. Uh -huh. Like, uh, not every film is going to be HBO Max exclusive. Like, if it's higher budget, then it's a go to feeders. Uh, that was a mistake Netflix made. Never having a theatrical release for their bigger films. Yeah. Remember when they forced that one film down our throat and said this is the most watched movie ever? And uh, I've heard no one talk about it. Which one? The one that starred The Rock and Gal Gadot and Ryan Reynolds. I've See, see, Austin. This is part of the problem. Yeah. This is this is more to my point. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw that was getting out of hand. So, and I have a I have a great crowd control special. Ooh, nothing more collectibles. Oh, so her air special, she shoves a camera on the ground. Oh, that's cool. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Ba Bam. So it's like a dump. Oh, uh, warehouse. Yeah, but most of the things they're finding are things that are broken or whatever, and poorly sealed up. I feel like I can in the arcade again. Did I mention I'm happy playing this game? Cause I am very happy. Yeah, this is this is great. Like this this feels like a much more fun turtles in time. Honestly, I think this is better than Scott Pilgrim is. Yeah, it's... Scott Pilgrim has a. Uh, I mean, there's some quality of life stuff that. that like it's a really steep difficulty curve. Yeah, and so far in this one there hasn't been. 
Yeah. Well, so far we're not stuck on anything. No, we've and we've gotten through every level without a game over. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Oh shit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go, yeah. I'm just hoping that the discovery mode doesn't fuck up Cartoon Network and one of those animation. I mean, they still got Sam Register so overseeing both now. I'm hoping um, the DCEU gets reset, and, but keep keep the aspects about it that we like. Like I think that's what they're planning for with the last movie. Oh, yeah, right. it's supposed, it supposed to be like a Top yeah, reboot. yeah. Isn't that ironic? The one movie was supposed to fix their problems, now they just made more. Mm -hmm. Oh, breaking out. Destroy two hundred big of a Yep, now head that yes. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm. Almost gone, though. So you can't touch him when he's got to see it up, you got Yes! Any comments? Any comments? Oh, you get some super when you're taunting and don't get hit. So that's why you, you taunt. My score says 911. Oh, that's what they need. Should that be calling when we're done with them? Oh, Crane didn't skip leg day. No, no, no he did. That's until he's doing legs. I'm guessing party up is like rearranging your party in the cutscenes. Yeah, I think so. Here it comes. Stage 11. Dinosaur Stampede. Dinosaur Stampede! I feel like I've seen this character before, but I don't know who it is. Yeah, I think there are Triceratop characters in, like, every single cartoon adaptation. See that Garfield Ninja Turtles crossover comic they did back in like the early '90s? No, I, I didn't read. I didn't oh, read right. comics at all when I was growing up. Believe it or not, I think the only, I only read the comic strips. The only comic strips I read when I was younger was like a, occasionally some of the Simpsons, Futurama, and uh, the yeah, Sonic ones. Oh yeah, I remember they used to have Simpsons comics back in the Disney Adventure magazine. But... Well, they also just had Simpsons comics period. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. I doubt that they still do. This is gonna get me a major promotion. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I had that one issue where like Bart was like going into like different realities in the and the and I kept the one Special where he was delivery. like he was like Ash from um, Pokemon and that's not a big Pokemon fan going up. Yep. So I saw the Simpsons and Pokemon. Give me this. I like how in the Tree House of Hollows best annual specials they do to get different comic book writers and artists uh, to do each story. Like they got Paul Dini to do a uh, parody of one um, that was like a return of the Edgar Allan Poe film. I mean Edgar Allan Poe story. Was that the the season with the Nevermore? Like no, it's not a season. It was the comics. 
I, I meant like that. What I meant was like there was one more. Like it was like the the, the one with the raven. Actually, no, it was some other story. I forgot the name of it, but because that's like that one. Like, whenever I, I always lost the tree, the older tree house of one episode of Halloween, but I remember the one with Barbara the raven. Right. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe's the raven. Right, that was a great segment. And James Earl Jones was the narrator. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, damn it! Get away from me! James Earl Jones at 92 is still working. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's a legend. Yep, he, he had, but correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's still voicing Darth Vader in the Kenobi show. Yes, he is! I, like, it's for, regardless of one's opinions on the uh, new Star Wars stuff, every, lately, every time I've seen Darth Vader depicted, I, I, I keep remembering, oh shit, this guy's actually an evil monster. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm like genuinely surprised with some of the stuff they have him do. Yeah, they, do you forget who he was for a second? Well, in the original movies, he was just kind of like this imposing figure that like only occasionally threatened people. But then like now I'm seeing him like just straight up murder. <laughs> well, I'm mean, ending again. Specifically, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is like during a very specific period. And I mean, this was the same guy who did a room for uh, kids. Yes. Something that's addressed in the Kenobi show. Mm hmm. You know what's funny? I think the, I think the, the guy who played the kid that uh, the first guy that threatened in that scene, uh, he does convention appearances and like his banner <laughs> for when you go and do a meet and greet is that that one screenshot of him looking at the lightsaber oh as, as, as he's about to be murdered. Uh, I remember when I was um, right, well, and he he cannot stand Star Wars fans anymore because of how negative and overly critical they are now. Oh yeah, no, I don't like them either. That's, like, why, that's why I can't I, I can't even engage with fandoms anymore. Yeah, he said, you guys keep whining about how you want Star Wars Amazing again. You finally got Star Wars Amazing again on Disney Plus, and you're still bitching about it, even trying to monetize your hatred on YouTube. Well, let's be real, not everything about Star Wars has been great. Like, I, yeah. The Rise of Skywalker is probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Never seen that one. You're, you're, consider yourself blessed. Check. <laughs> I'll take your... Oh, I put. Everyone says The Last Jedi is the worst. I'm like, no, The Rise of Skywalker, where they tried to appease the people that hated The Last Jedi, was worse. <laughs> oh, okay, they get sucked in. Oh, so the two pizza box heals both of us. Okay. Good. Captain Zorax. I think you, that's a cold medicine. <laughs> we're, we're Lieutenant Aspirin. Oh. This is, yeah, this is gonna be a challenge for sure. Don't get me started on Private Miralax. <laughs> what a shitty person he is. <laughs> and there's Colonel Pe Pe Pepto Bismol. Oh. Oh, really? Wow, he wasn't shit. That boss was quick. I know. Ooh. Ooh. Got a new move. Plus, why we're doing a stack with the perform speed. Yeah, I think we can beat this. Yeah, we only have a couple of levels left. Damn, I'm just getting achievement. We're just getting achievements left and right. Well, they're, they're, they're just for beat this level. <laughs> I can imagine any more challenging achievements aren't going to be easy. Episode 12, It Won't Fly. It won't fly. Oh, back to Stockman. I was about to say, who could this be? <laughs> No one who was originally black in the comics and they made him white in the 80s show. I guess because... They made him black in the 2012 show again. Yeah, they made him black in every other adaptation since. And Film Lamar voiced him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder when you get around to it to watch the 2012 show. I think it's on Netflix again and it's even trending on the app again. Like, it's the... Right now, it's the number one uh, most watched uh, 
cartoon there. Unless I'm crazy, I think I remember watching that during the, it was the pandemic or when I was unemployed before the pandemic happened. Now it was during. I don't. No. I was watching Star Wars Clone Wars during the pandemic. Yeah, I remember Philly saying that because of the David 87 show was more capable than a Tullus Forever one. Yeah, 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 yes, it was. Like, he said the only thing they got right about Tullus Forever was Splinter being the wise father figure slash sensei. Like, when they were talking to him and he gave out a uh, wise pop up, he said, they said, that sounds like a lot, I like something the odds Splinter would say. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's because co-creator Peter Laird wasn't a fan of the 80s show. Eh, uh, that, that's... Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. A lot of big adaptations of uh, people's work don't, aren't usually well-liked by their uh, creators. Like, I know S Stephen King hates the Tim Curry hit. He famously hates that one. He also hates Stanley Kubrick's take on The Shining. From how far it deviates from the film. Mm -hmm. This is all yours, by the way. Oh, look at that. Damn, I'm getting rid of this. Oh, look out. Nice. Okay, so that's why it's a ton more. Yeah, it all matters if you up up your super by a whole ball. Oh, uh, that, that's a neat thing that they took from wrestling games. Because apparently in wrestling games, depending on a uh, depending on like what your charisma meter is, uh, you can ra you can raise your super meter by taunting. Except this thing actually bounced it. Where it's like, well, if you do it interrupted, then you get a, you get a quick boost instead of just doing it constantly. Ah, and this one must have been just it's still good. Oh, what happened? Uh, 2K started making it. Oh. Oh, damn. After, T after THQ went under, then uh, 2K started making it instead. Oh, shit. No problem. Oh, shit. Damn it. God damn it! There it is. Stay tuned. Oh shit! My turn. Oh shit! Stop the hole and shaking! Oh my god! I forgot! I forgot! <laughs> I'm sure I want to make that the thumbnail of the episode when it happens. <laughs> I'm just picturing Michelangelo as a part of the people while everyone behind him is rotting. Yes! <laughs> oh, that sounds like the pop of creepy pasta. Michelangelo ignores the death of his friends! <laughs> What is the dumbest creepypasta you ever read? Um, like that narrows it down. Someone tried to... Back when I was still a brony, um, someone tried to like get my goat by uh, sending me this poorly written creepypasta about how like all the uh, the uh, main cast of were being uh, converted into spiders. What? Yeah, like there, there was like some weird thing going around where like, that was some of like, this evil spider was like converting all the... Spiders and like, and, and I didn't even know this person all that well. I just knew they were just trying to be a cunt the whole way. I'm sorry, that's someone's very specific fetish. Spideroism. Well, I know one's very specific fetish is deliberately trying to get someone to go just because they like something that I don't. I know way too many people who are like that. Like, I, I knew somebody who knew that I was a big One Piece fan and said, like, oh, if they were real pirates, they would be hanged. I'm like, you okay? Thanks. There he is, Baxter Stockman. 
Don't need that. Yeah, this sounds closer to its entire boss music. I'll hear it when we when I have a piece. I actually would edit them here because I have the progress for it, but I don't have all my assets. I have it at home. Like I have the I have the intro and stuff at home, but not oh, on my shit. laptop. And then Damasis, no, just a Polygon. Nope, and you can't damage him right now. But we can now. Okay, jump went off the uh, being activated. Swatted. We juggle them. You, you no good there was an action. Seven minutes. Oh my god, that must have been the longest one yet. Oh, was it? Was that the longest we've taken? Yep. Oh, oh shit. Crane shoot is back. We're going to Dimension X. Yeah, I figured we would with how many levels we have left. Alright, let's hop in. Yeah! This might, this might be our last episode of yeah. the day. Technodrome Redo. Well, the last level of the episode. I mean. The Larathon. Oh, one of those rat guys from... Uh, that looks like- I thought that was like the robot from the original Scooby-Doo season. It looked like to me. Oh yeah, I don't know that episode. The one with the, one with the robot running around the, the abandoned amusement park? Yeah. It, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, like some kind of- Well, that's why you shouldn't automate uh, in, in uh, retail jobs. That's what I say. Yeah, and then, uh, isn't it funny that like most of the Scooby-Doo villains are just for poor people? Yep. The real monster in Scooby Doo is capitalism. <laughs> Alright, uh, I find it funny that there are two very different Scooby Doo shows in production. That Fema Adult Sony cartoon and then that preschool cartoon they're doing. Let's hope the preschool one doesn't actually show a scene where someone's head being sliced open. Uh -huh. it's like, whoop, I'm walking on the wrong team. That's kind of like a thing I like about WB animation. Like, it felt like it never had to be too restricted with its characters compared to Disney. Yeah, because I would love a more mystery in the world with uh, Mickey Donald and Goofy. Mm -hmm. I think that was a comic miniseries in Europe. A murder mystery with Mickey Donald and Goofy? No, it's like a dog. It was a Mickey Mouse show where he went to uh, his old hometown, which is like some kind of dark and gritty city, and. And then Otaku is missing, he's a key suspect and he has to prove his innocence while being on the run. Daisy was found murdered in the streets last night. <laughs> it was as cold as the, as the ice in my, uh, my whiskey. Yeah, the comics can be pretty crazy from what I've seen. It's a cold world out there. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Oh yeah, them, now I'm remembering those DC Looney Tunes crossovers where they have Batman vs. Elmer Fudd. 
And the opening was a noir style introduction, only it's narrated by Emma Clay, complete with speech impediments like Wayne. Falls harder nowhere else in America but Gotham City. <laughs> I still can't believe you thought that two seconds in my shirt tired with that word I answered. <laughs> it was like a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of the internet was fooled by every. Not every single parody was by Weird Al. Weird Al has a very specific sounding voice, and if you don't hear it, then he didn't do it. My favorite will always be Amish Paradise. Mm -hmm. Then I declare against gangsters pat oh. 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 Oh, I guess things are getting tougher now. And uh, Weird Al was actually famous with like famous musicians. Like, like uh, I remember Kurt Cobain of uh, Nirvana. Well, uh, was asked by like, when, when Weird Al asked if he could do a parody of Smell the Team Spirit. He, uh, Nirvana said, uh, uh, Kurt was like, "It's not going to be a song about food, is it?" Because <laughs> most of his parodies involve food. But yeah, I think I think I know what you're saying. I don't. I'm not sure if Coolio liked uh, his uh, parody. Yeah, he considered Bank Games' as Paradise be too serious to uh, be satirized. I mean, yeah, I think it. Uh, I think I think the, uh, the, the the subject nature of that song is uh, this bit, it's pretty dark. But and yet he was co doing the intro for Keenan and Cal. Oh, uh, here it goes. Oh, oh shit! Get away! Mm. Oh my god, that was close. What would happen to the reboot of all of that that Nickelodeon had? Is that still going? Uh, no, I don't think it went well. Which is a shame. I, I would have, like, you know, all that was actually really, uh, really beneficial yeah. for our generation. Um, yeah, that's great. And people were complaining, it's like, oh, they're not as funny as the original cast. Like, you know, like, the original cast are, like, in the 40s now? Yeah, and Kenan Thompson's on SNL now. Mm, not doing his best work. Although, although I added everybody there, he's like he's among the better ones. No problem. Yeah. I, I, I love the Black Shepherd skit he did with Chadwick Boseman, and Black, uh, Chadwick Boseman was in character as the Black Panther. <laughs> oh, General Track. Oh, I don't remember him. He just looks like the Thing going Commando. Uh, yeah. So, something we don't need more of in uh, media. Like. The thing. Oh, I thought you meant the horror movie thing. No, as in like clobber in time. Oh. That's also what he says right before sex. Yeah, because he's he's abusive to his partners. Oh. Right. Uh, he walked into that one. Nah, uh, Ben Grimm's a good guy. Despite how kind of stupid they were, I actually really did like the Fox adaptation of the, the Fantastic Four. The first one. Not Fan Four Stick. Fan Four Stick is trash. Or oh, Rise of Silver Surfer. The Silver Surfer was just alright. Like the Tongue Galactus into a tornado. <laughs> and they turned. And the thing with the Great Mighty Pooh give them with legs. Oh yeah, and Chris Evans was the Human Torch in the first one. Oh, in the in Fan Four Stick, uh, Johnny Storm was uh, Michael B. Jordan. Aww. Well, I think they did a good job, but you know he got he got to be in a good Marvel movie anyway. Yeah, yeah I loved him as Killmonger. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think Love Is might be my favorite Marvel show. Oh, I'll follow them at the moment. You'll be happy to know it's being a second season right oh, now. Oh, good. And it's the last time we heard Chad Bosch with guys to Kala. Yeah. yeah, well, it's T'Challa and Chad. T'Challa. And Chad with Bozeman. Chad with Bozeman. Shit, sorry. Sorry. Who you play Battle Ball with wins for us? Yeah. Ooh, this is all found. If you got a buzz, and then I got a buzz. Oh. I just remember that one Garfield strip where John Ott, 
John Zagata and you hear a buzz and he's saying how his phone's on silent mode, but then he sees his phone is on a table and buzzing coming from his pants. Bullets won't work, John. Well, that's one way for Garfield to uh, get with the time. Oh, oh, who's that? Robos Chrome Dome. Okay. I thought it was gonna be like Super Shredder. I was like, well, they probably didn't get Kevin Nasty the other boys, so that they did the Secret of the Use. Yeah, and uh, for good reason. Yeah, you'd probably tear one of his quads. No, you heard about the allegations? Uh, no. I don't want to ruin your childhood. No, I don't. I, I didn't grow up with Kevin Nash all that much. I, I saw. I, uh, I didn't see very much of him when I was watching wrestling. Oh, oh! I thought you said Kevin Class, like the Muppeteer. No, Kevin Nash isn't the wrestler. He, oh, he was like the physical actor for Super Shredder and Secret Reviews. Oh. Also, I didn't watch a ton of Sesame Street past the age of three. <laughs> By the time I discovered Batman and Sonic the Hedgehog, I was already dead past preschool stuff. Mm -hmm. I can. Because that, like, it was, that's why it was weird whenever I see people like my age, like, oh, it's like, oh, Blue's Clues, oh, Steve you Back. Can. And I'm like, I'd stop. I didn't. I was done with preschool shit after a certain point. Oh, when he goes in to first putty and can throw the ninja at him. I did do that again. Let's see. Walk up to a ninja, you automatically grab it, then press down X. Oh shit! No problem. Oh shit! Oh, I almost did it. The hell? Thank you. There you go. Ooh. Oh shit. There we go. Dang, he's down, but like, he takes a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Now it's my turn. Oh shit. There you go. Mm -mm -mm. Finally! Hey, boy. Ten minutes. Okay, that might have been the longest one yet. You're complaining from his hands. Yeah, no okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we call an episode here. Or... Yep, so next time on Super Horns Round, it could be the finale of this oh. because we, we only have uh, three more levels after this. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.